Okay, part B goes to look at tests. It doesn't actually have you run the test, it gives you the results of the test. So in the first part, a student named Clark did the interval, and in the second part, a student named Aurelia did the test. These were her hypotheses. The null is that the proportion was one sixth. The alternative is that the proportion was greater than one sixth, that it actually changed, that the six showed up more often. Um, when she did that, she got a Z statistic of 1.83. She got a P value of 0.033. And then they'd ask the question about what, what decision would you make at a significance at an alpha level of 0 0.05? Uh, in this case, since the p-value of 0 0.033 is less than alpha of 0 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis. There's evidence to support the claim that the proportion of 6 has changed and actually has increased so that this die may not be fair anymore. And the question asks, asks specifically, how does this mesh with what the student did in A? And in this case, it conflicts with it. Um, that's all it asked. It didn't really ask any detail, but the reason that it conflicts with it is Clark's confidence interval was two-sided. When you do a confidence interval, you're doing plus minus, so you're looking both directions. Aurelia's test was only looking up. So in this case, we're comparing a two-sided interval to a one-sided test. And like I said in class, you can't do that um, and get this, and you're, you're most likely not to get the same results. So. Uh, the answer to the question is they, they conflict with one another. What I just explained is just additional information that kind of helps understand that.